Hmm. Who is that? Huh? That's you, buddy. <laughs> Not my socks. Hey! Dude! Lefty, you better give me that. <laughs> Left. Not my socks, bro. Ugh, these had to dry up from yesterday's walk. Got soaked. Hey! Excuse me. Hey! Go, hey! Stop that! <laughs> Left. Okay. Okay. Goodness. Okay. Leave my socks alone, goofball. Oh, oh my goodness, big stretches. Hi everyone. One of the things that I do when it's warm here, when we're stationary, because the truck is just sitting out here in the driveway. So I come out here in the morning and I turn on, I don't know if you can see it up there. I turn on the fan. I crack the window here, the screened window just so I can get some air moving through here so that it just doesn't build up through the day. And I've also used my small fan there. This is one of the Road King. This is, we call them truck stop fans. I've not really liked this fan since I got it. It's very noisy. This grill has a tendency to vibrate. It's harmonics. It goes through, you know, phases of vibration and noise. But I've got a new fan in here and this thing is moving some air and I don't even have it I've got it like a third of the way up. This is a Smart Tele. This is their 12 inch version. They also have one in a 16 inch version. And if you stick around, one of you is gonna end up winning that, okay? So these are battery powered. You don't see any wires coming out of that thing, right? It comes with a wall adapter. My idea is, you know, when I'm maybe watching a movie during the day and I have the inverter on, I plug in this fan and charge it up and then at night I can run it off its battery through the night have some air movement have a little bit of fan noise I don't know what if you're like me I like to have a fan running at night it lets me sleep just that kind of white noise in the background this is perfect for overnight gonna run off a battery doesn't have to have AC power it's not gonna make a lot of noise so this is their 12 inch they have a 16 inch which one of you is going to win? We're going to do a giveaway on this. We're going to do the giveaway on Monday, June 20th. If you want to be entered to win, in this video down in the comments, use the word Smart Telly. S M A R T E L E. Put it in your comment. I'll do the drawing on the 20th. And then on June 21st, I'll post a video with the winner. Hopefully, it's you, and you'll get the 16 inch version. Now, I'm going to share a story with you. This happened just a few months ago when we were still out in Arizona. I've got to share this, though. I was a knucklehead. Come on. He wants to go the other way. Come on. I'm going to tell everybody a story about you. What is that noise? Oh, it's a drone. I'm be one of those people that says, I hope you got your permit. Because if I can't post my videos till I get my license, nobody can. <laughs> so yesterday, um, I had a really horrible incident that I... Uh, do you mind? You're ruining my shot, bro. So yesterday I was unpacking uh, the replacement screen for my over-the-bed um, video system. 
And so I was opening the box and I had the camera on and I was kind of, I was talking to all of you while I was opening the box and didn't pay attention that the, the little package of those beads fell onto the floor and I'm not really thinking anything of it. So I continue on talking to you guys on the, on the camera. And then when I was like finished up, I looked down and Lefty was chewing on that bag of silica beads and he had ripped it open and the beads were all over on the carpet and I freak out, right? I've, cause everybody knows those little things say do not eat, right? So that means to me that there's a problem with them. They're toxic, they're poisonous, whatever. So I freak out and you know, I kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye that it fell out of the box when I pulled the screen out, that it landed on the carpet, but I didn't react to it. First thought is, oh, I just got to wait and see if he gets sick. And then I'm like, no, I can't, you know, I can't do that. I got to do something here. So I'm thinking, make him throw up. How do you make a dog throw up? So I Dr. Google it and hydrogen peroxide, 3%. One tablespoon for every, no, one teaspoon for every 10 pounds or I forget what it was. But so I'm like, okay, I don't have any hydrogen peroxide. So I call Tara real quick and I say, hey, do either you or Dottie have some hydrogen peroxide? And I told her real quick what happened. She's like, yeah, I got some. So I start walking down to her. She starts walking to me. We meet in the middle. She hands me the bottle of uh, peroxide. So I'm thinking, how am I going to... How am I going to measure this? I figure out, okay, if I take one spoon of the peroxide and then 33 spoons of water, that's 3%. So I do that, right? And I get it all mixed up and like, okay, what am I going to do to get it, to get him to drink it, right? And I have one of those uh, ear flushing, like rubber bubble things that you can suck water into and then squeeze it. So I get that. And I fill that a couple of times and squirt it down his throat. Then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to walk him around. It said 10 to 15 minutes for them to vomit. So I hook him up to the leash and start walking. And then I, as I walk away, I got a flash in my mind of the label of the peroxide that says it's 3% peroxide mixed in with water. So the peroxide in the bottle is already at 3%. So I mixed the 3% solution, 3% with water. <laughs> so I don't know, do the math on that, right? So hardly any peroxide. And I didn't even put all of it down his throat. Only two squirts of that bubble. So then I, st I stopped. I calmed myself down for a minute. I got my phone back out. And I searched for what do you do if your dog eats the silica beads and it says it's not going to bother them they're not toxic the worst they might do if they ingest a lot of them is give them some some gastrointestinal problems like you know me farting and stuff so they they said as long the the biggest problem is if they swallow the whole bag it could obstruct uh their flow but he didn't swallow the whole bag i don't know that he swallowed any of the beads you know, the whole bag was there. He just kind of chewed the corner of it off. So, in other words, you don't really need to do anything. If he got a couple of beads in him, it's not going to bother him. So then I'm feeling like a real dipshit because I, I overreacted so bad, you know, based on being really mad at myself for letting that bag fall on the ground. Because... You know, that's his purview down there. Anything that hits the floor, he's he's in charge. He's going to inspect it, investigate it, chew it, eat it, whatever it is. So thankfully, he didn't swallow the bag. And, you know, if he got a couple of the beads in him, they're just going to pass through him and come out the other side. So then we got him on the leash and walked back down and brought Tara the peroxide back and told her the whole pitiful story of... Uh, and I mean, this is the next day, the morning. He, he didn't, he didn't vomit because I didn't give him enough peroxide to make an ant vomit, I don't think, because I diluted the 3%, 3%. Uh, 
So he's fine. He's, you know, still eating all his food and snacks and acting normal. So I'm putting that behind me. But I'll be dang certain that those little packages that come in all the electronic stuff or other things too I've seen them in, that those are first thing going to be secured so they don't go on the floor because I don't want to go through anything like that again. But what a knucklehead I am. You know, I've called him a knucklehead before, but this time I was the knucklehead. No chipmunk hunting, buddy. Come here. This way. Hi, everyone. If you all remember back, I think it was two years ago, down in uh, Quartzsite, I met uh, Tom and his family, and we did a tour of his rig. Wasn't the greatest tour because this guy just wouldn't be quiet for the whole video. So there's a lot of lefty noises in it, but I'll put a link down uh, beneath this video linking to that tour. So Tom and the family have branched off onto a different path in this life, and they're gonna be putting their rig up for sale. I guess they have it listed already on Craigslist, and. Uh, he asked if I would show it to all of you because I know there's a lot of you out there that are interested in ambulances. So I'm going to put some pictures up here that Tom sent me. Um, they did a lot of work on this rig. I, I've seen it firsthand. It has low miles, really great condition when they got it, and they did a lot of work, a lot of upgrades. has a lot of systems installed in it. I'll run the details on the screen here for everybody. So I'm going to have Tom's email address on the screen here, and plus I'll put it down in the video description. If you're interested in the rig, get in touch with him. I can attest that it's a high-quality rig, and uh, whoever the new owners are, they're going to really enjoy it. Uh, we got a problem. This is Lefty. I've caught him up here doing that thing, that nesting thing where they scratch. And I've stopped him, but obviously I'm too late. Um, so, I mean, these are 20 years old. The fact that they're still intact, I'm probably lucky there. But now this one, and you know, this will only get worse. So I've got to get um, some kind of solution, cover, something like that. You know, I've always wanted to see if I couldn't find a pair of much better seats. You know, I would imagine, I don't know it, but I would guess that the same seat mounting pattern is probably still used. Do they still make E-Series vans? I'm gonna put that info right across the screen here because I don't know. But, you know, I would guess, I wouldn't be surprised if I was able to find seats out of a relatively new model E-Series van that would bolt right in here, I wouldn't be surprised. And all of the RVs that were built on the E450 and E350 chassis, those seats bolt right in here. Actually, one of you sent me it was an email and shared uh, photos of some seats that you had just picked up out of a, an RV that you're going to bolt into your uh, rig. Jealous. <laughs> this guy was jealous. They were awesome looking. It's just, you know, that's one of the things that's on the list. Not a high priority, but if I were able to stumble into some seats that would bolt in here, I would be a happy guy. Really happy. Especially after seeing this. got a rainy day so I'm hiding up under the porch remember we have the live stream on Friday this Friday June 10th it's gonna be at 12 noon Eastern time I hope y'all are gonna be there 
celebrating 25,000 subscribers, which is all of you. So I hope you're gonna be there. I've got some other announcements too. So we'll see you Friday at noon Eastern time. You wanna go to the park? You wanna go see Dalen and Blue at the park? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Right here. The car smells brand new. Well, it's got like 1,500 miles on it. It's got new car smell. Right? Doesn't it get new car smell? There you go. Hi. Hi, sweetheart.